Yo guys, this is Ricky coming to you from the Rocket Red Raptor. I am getting ready to get some more of the stuff out of my old studio and put it into my new studio. I'm renting back my old studio temporarily from the guy that bought my house. I need to vacate soon and move all the stuff to my new place. Um, I love my new place. I can't wait to get everything in there and up and running. And that's what I'm doing today. It is a chilly morning here in Southern California. Nothing compared to where I'm from at this time of year, but it's chilly nonetheless. So I'm going over to pick up some components, my mic pre's, my snake, some mic stands, things like that. This is an ongoing project. You can find out why I switched from Pro Tools to Studio One by Personas, how I'm micing things, what mics I'm using, and that sort of stuff. It is uh, an adventure and I want you to take it with me. All right. My old studio is basically a garage that I converted and as you can see it's become essentially a storage unit. Right there I've got my son's drum kit and another kit that I built and this is the unit I got to get out of here today with some of my components that I'm going to take over. So that is what I'm doing. You can see I'm using my truck as a truck as it should be. I've got everything loaded up with the help of my neighbor helped me lift the heavy case up. And we are going to head back over and start setting up. going to get squared away. You can see my drums are buried back here right now among all the stuff that I've had to move. This is the space where I'm going to have my mixer. Right now I just have a bunch of stuff sort of just sitting around just to test. So today that's all going to change. I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of it. As you can see, I can see my drums from here. Um, this is going to be my mic closet. Uh, that's my electrical panel, so I can get at that pretty easily. So it's not a ton of space in this control room, as you can see, but it's a home studio, so it doesn't bother me that much. I have a loft up there. Um, I've got plenty of ceiling space. I'm going to have to do a little more acoustic alteration here to get this place to sound right. Um, but overall, this is going to be a really slamming little place. TC's office over there. This is just a big mess right now, but it won't be forever. Before we go any farther, I just wanted to show you my mic pre-rack. This is a pretty important part of my studio right here. This is the rack that we use to make the Devil City Angels record. First of all, I have a, uh, my power supply. Uh, my rack rider. It's a power conditioner, I guess I should say. And then right here, I have the Dan Alexander uh, Neve inputs. I have uh, Avalon. Uh, there's two um, dual set of Avalon. Here's an eight channel Personas. It's the M80. And uh, this was the very first iteration. And from my understanding, it was way better back then. That's what I've been told. Um, I always like it. Um, so we used it for a lot of things. We used it for the snare drum actually on Devil City. The next set I have four inputs of Trident, which I absolutely love Trident, especially for toms. And that's what I was using it for. I had one for each tom, a four toms, so there you go. The Mic Pre from Universal Audio, it's an LA610. Uh, and it, was, it has com building compression. It's a fantastic item. Then moving over here, which I'm going about to mount, is the Quantum by Personas, and then also the Digimax DP88, which will expand my channels to 16 inputs. I have a Mac Pro trash can, and I have uh, the Genelec close range um, monitors. I'm gonna put some JBLs in here too. Okay, I just finished installing the Digimax DP88 and the Quantum, both of these units are by Personas. And a lot of people are wondering, like they've said to me, why you as a professional, which I'm a professional because I do music for a living, I don't dabble in music, this is what I do. Why do you not have a Pro Tools rig? I do have a Pro Tools rig. I've had a Pro Tools rig for 20 years. I did the Devil City Angels record on that Pro Tools rig. It's time to upgrade. And that means uh, a lot of expense. Pro Tools is expensive. 
and they'll try to make you feel like you have not arrived unless you're using Pro Tools. Well, I got news for you. I used Studio One by Personas and fell in love with it. And I started digging into all the components and the fact that they are a hardware software company now. And I just decided I'm going to give it a shot and I really, really so far like it. There will be some musician friends of mine that will be like, hey, I'm going to bring my session over and why don't you have Pro Tools? Well, you know what? You can import all those files into Studio One. So anyway, I'm going to get this running. i got to finish wiring stuff up and see if I can get all this stuff to work together. Okay, so I've been wiring this up a little bit. So the first thing I'm starting with is the power supplies. They're these little like um, block type ones. So what I did was I just Velcroed it in there. I did one on each side, if you can see. And then I just ran it along the bottom, kind of just hanging out. I'm not gonna tighten that up too much. So I got plenty of room in there. So that's where I'm starting. Okay, so I got everything wired up. I've got uh, the Quantum and the DP88 wired into the computer. Got the speakers hooked up. This is kind of the moment of truth in a way. We're going to see if everything works. I had a little bit of a snag. I forgot to download something, uh, but I did. And uh, now it's running. <clears throat> there was a driver that you have to download. So all I did was uh, just load up some techno song just because I, I'm trying to pass signal. So we are, in fact, up and working. So now what I've done is I've hooked up a Personas monitor station, which I've had for a while. And then that way I can switch between uh, different speakers and I can also send out a headphone mix uh, when it comes time to do that. But this is how it works. Here's a dumb recording I made. Fa la 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 I can just turn it off and on and uh, split between the speakers. <laughs> I hooked up this mic. What I did was I did some of the digital inputs. I didn't bring the snake through, but I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna try some overhead mics on the drums and see if it actually works, see what that sounds like. Okay, I have even more of a mess, but it's actually a starting to come together mess. So the snake is pulled through and uh, it's going in to my rack so I can uh, so I can pass signal that way and then I'm going into this mess bring it up a little bit I'm just going to use two microphones they are a match pair and uh, I'm going to try those guys on this kit just to see if we are passing signal and recording Actually, those, that rack of jackets right there is actually going to work really well, <laughs> oddly enough. All right, here we go. This out. No effects. Clean, straight out, straight out of the box. Nothing on it whatsoever. No compression, no nothing. Pretty amazing. This was day one of trying to get the studio like actually fit in here and organized. I still have these speakers over here to install. Um, I've got cables for days. This is a big mess, but I've got, I got pretty far because I had to carry everything myself today. Um, I'm going to have to get a hard drive for this because I don't have a ton of storage on my trash can. So I'm going to have to do that. That's something I need to do. And what I want to do is I want to get like a bass player in here, a guitar player in here and actually like try to record. So the one thing I'm waiting on are the fader ports. I have the fader port 16 coming 
and that will be my hardware so that um, I can control my software. Um, I can work in the box for now, that's not the end of the world, but it does make it a whole lot better for me because I really grew up with consoles. Um, but really, most of my control is right over here with my mic prees. But it's just when you get into a mixing situation that it really becomes important more than anything. Um, it won't be long um, until I get this really dialed into where I really need it to be and it's going to be phenomenal. Plus, you're going to be able to play in there live. What I want to be able to do, this is my ultimate goal, is to be able to just be able to rehearse in there and always have the drums mic'd up so that if we want to record something we can just go you know what we hit something let's just let's just go for it let's just record let's just get an idea down and just be able to do that and have a nice idea not just turn on like a little recorder and it sound crappy and can't really tell what's going on but the reason studio musicians are so good is because they hear themselves back constantly so the more you record yourself the better you get because you're constantly correcting and you can hear the little nuances and it's just, you know, sometimes you think you're playing better than you are. Um, and, you know, a lot of times when we've been on tour and then come back in and go into the studio, it's like, whoa, you know, it takes a couple days sometimes even just to get used to wearing headphones and hearing every nuance of what you're playing. A lot of these people that are like recording themselves on YouTube, it's a great way to, to stay in practice. It's a great way to, to really check yourself. But you can get stagnant too, you know. You need to get out there and just play and, and make it happen and not, if you overthink stuff all the time, then it just becomes about that. It just becomes this science project and it doesn't become truly inspired. I do want to say that I love the Quantum so far. I have not really paired up the Digimax. Um, uh, DP88 yet, so I don't know how that's going to work. I think it's going to be great. I have so much to, to go over and so much fun stuff to do. This is going to be something I feel like I'm going to have an ongoing thing about. So, not all, not every week, but just once in a while. People like to know how I record or how friends of mine record. It, it'd be great to get some of the Devil City Angels in here. Um, I know Joel is a, a very talented guy when it comes to studio work. For now, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you like this. And remember to be good to each other and keep rock alive.